Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. I'm talking about greatest common factor today. When we ask you to find the greatest common factor of two numbers, we're asking you to find the greatest number that divides evenly into both numbers. I'm going to talk about a couple of different methods here. And the first method is just to compare the factors. Write out the factors for each number and find the greatest number that appears on both lists. So if I ask you to find the greatest common factor, the GCF is how we abbreviate that, for 8 and 12, I would list out all the factors of 8. Now notice the factors are all the numbers that divide evenly into 8. So that's what we're talking about here, a number that divides evenly into both numbers. And then I list out all the factors of 12, which I have listed here. Now, these have more than one factor in common. They both have one. One goes into everything, so everything's going to share a one. They both have a two. They both have a four, and that's where it stops. So they have greater factors. Uh, eight, is eight has a factor of eight. Twelve has six and twelve. But we're talking about the one that goes into both of those, and we're talking about the greatest factor that goes into both. So their greatest common factor is 4. We're just listing out the factors and then seeing which ones they have in common. So for the next one I have 14 and 28. You could list out the all the factors of 14 and you can list out all the factors of 28 and what you can see is they have all these factors in common. In fact 14 because it divides evenly into 28 and it divides evenly into itself that's our GCF. So sometimes you might be able to look at the question and know the answer without having to do any of that if you can say, wait a minute, 14 goes into 28, so that's the greatest common factor that they share. And the next one we have is um, find the GCF of 15 and 32. So if I list out the factors of 15, I have 1, 3, 5, and 15. And for 32, I have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. And if we look through here, we can see that they, of course, have a 1 in common because everything has a 1. But that's it. There's no other common factors between 15 and 32. So the greatest common factor here is just 1. And usually when we're looking for a greatest common factor, 1 doesn't help us. So we would say there's nothing in common, even though they really do have a 1. But usually we're hoping for something more than that. Okay, and the second method, whoops, there's no C to this, just two, just two parts. Um, divide both numbers by a common factor and repeat until the only common factor is 1, and then multiply everything down the left side to find the GCF. So let's look at that process for 18 and 42. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write 18 and 42. And I'm doing upside down division, so I do it like this. So I'm looking for something that goes into 18 and 42. Well, it doesn't matter what you start with. So let's say that I saw 2. So I say 2 goes into 18 9 times, and 2 goes into 42 21 times. Notice that 2 times 21 is 42, 2 times 9 is 18. That's the upside down division that we're doing. Now I would look at this and say, is there anything else in common? And, and I can see that 3 goes into both of these. And if you're not sure, of course, you can use your calculator to find those numbers they have in common. 3 goes into 9 3 times, and 3 goes into 21 7 times. Then you ask yourself, well, is there anything that goes into 3 and 7? And again, we want to do this until the only common factor is 1. And as we said before, everything has a 1 in common. So there's nothing. So then we're going to multiply everything on the left side and find our GCF. So our greatest common factor here is 2 times 3, which is 6. And you might say, well, I saw 6 right away. What would you have done if you had just seen that? Well, you could have maybe seen that 6 goes into both of these. And if you did, you would have said this goes 3 times, this goes 7. Do you see how we got the 3 and 7 anyway? We just did it in one step, and the greatest common factor is just 6 in that case. So maybe you can look at these and see what the greatest common factor is, but be careful because sometimes you don't see the greatest common factor. So let's look at this one, 32 and 80. What goes into both of these numbers? You could start with 2 or 4 or 8, whatever it is you see. Don't feel like you have to start with the greatest common factor. You just have to start with some 
common factor. So let's say that I saw 4, and then I would say that's 8 and that's 20. And then I would say, well, wait a minute, 8 and 20 have something in common. They have another 4 in common. 4 goes into 8 twice, 4 goes into 20 five times, and 2 and 5 only have a common factor of 1, so I'm done, and I'm going to multiply everything on the left side to get my greatest common factor, and my greatest common factor then is 16. Maybe you would have started this by saying, hey, I noticed that 8 goes into both of these, and then that would go 4 times, and that would go 10 times, and then you'd say, oh, but 2 goes and you get back to 8 times 2, which is 16. Maybe you would have seen 16 right off the bat, or maybe you would have started with 2. There's many different ways to get there. Don't stop until you have no common factor at the bottom except for 1. And the last two examples, 78 and 156, and if you want to pause and try these on your own, that would be a great idea. Remember that you might do it a little differently than I am, but you should get the same answer. As we can see, there's more than one way to do these. So let's say I started off, and I, I don't know, but they're both even, so I would just go with 2. And 2, I would use my calculator maybe if I needed to. 2 goes into 7839 times. It goes into 156, 78 times. And then maybe I'd say, well, what goes into these two? And you could use your rules of divisibility to help you, or you can use your calculator. But these look like they're both divisible by 3. 9 plus 3 is 12. 12, 12 is divisible by 3, so 39 is. 7 plus 8 is 15. 15 is divisible by 3. That's how I can tell with the 3's. And 3 goes into 39 13 times and into 78 26 times. And then I could finally see, oh, 13. And 13 goes into itself once and it goes into 26 twice. Again, you may have used a totally different set of numbers. Uh, you might have started off with 13 or started off with 6 or started off with 3 or whatever it is you started off with, you should still get the same numbers at the bottom. And when you multiply, for me, I have 2 times 3 times 13, which is 78. And maybe you noticed already that 78 is just times 2 is 156. And finally, as the sun just came out and sh showered my paper with sun, um, 36 and 96. And I'm going to start off with, you can start off with whatever you want. Let's say we start off with 6. 6 goes in there 6, and 6 goes into 96 16 times. And then I could say 2, 2 goes into 6 3 times, 2 goes into 16 8 times. There's no more common factors. My LCD is, or not LCD, excuse me, GCF, too many acronyms today, um, is 12 but maybe you would have started off with something different. So please don't get hung up on what you start with. Maybe you would have started with 36, and then you should have gotten 18 and 48, and then you could have maybe seen two again. You can always, if you have even numbers, you can at least do even numbers as far as you can. And then finally maybe saw three, and then you get three and eight, which is what we had over here. Two times two times three is 12, the same as six times two is. So we know that we can find that in multiple ways. We just have to keep going until we have no common factors except for one. And you might be asking, why are we learning this? Um, when you simplify a fraction, you are dividing out the greatest common factor from the numerator and the denominator. So you're going to use this when you simplify fractions. And later in more advanced algebra topics, you'll factor out the GCF from polynomials. Sorry about the sunlight on this video. I'm going to call it good, though. Have a fantastic day.